Hello! My name is Maud, I'm an automated test conceptor and welcome to this tutorial about passing parameters to a subscript part 2. In this tutorial we will see how to add a CSV or JSON file in your call script action, then we'll see different ways to execute your parameters and finally we'll see how to add an elements text in your call script action. Here we want to add a CSV or JSON file in our script. Beforehand, we've already created a subscript that includes a calculation. To see how it is done, you can check the first tutorial about passing parameters to a subscript. So the subscript looks like this, with all the elements for the calculation, which is 2 times 8 equals 16. Then we are going to call this script in our main script. For that, you just have to drag and drop your subscript situated in your file into your current script. Now, we want to call for the CSV or JSON file that also have all these elements. The CSV files and JSON files are represented by a table with parameters in the columns and iterations in the rows. With this button, you can add a parameter. You can also add iterations with this button. You can also sort the columns by alphabetical order by clicking on this button. So for this example, I've created a JSON file. In a JSON file, you can change the name of the parameters, whereas you can't in a CSV file. There are four parameters in my file to do a calculation. A number, an operator, another number, and the result. To verify the expected result, click on your subscript and click on your CSV JSON file button to call your file. The action is created, so now you just have to drag and drop your JSON or CSV file. Once this is done, you can change the values of your subscript elements to the parameters of your JSON file. Here we have four parameters named num1, operator, num2, and result. So, go back to your subscript and change the values. For the first one, it is $param num1. Then, it is $param operator. Then, it is $param num2. And finally, for the result, it is dollar param result. Then you can click on the play button to execute the action. Here, as you can see, all the parameters that I used in this iteration are shown here. It will execute a second time with the parameters of the JSON files because we've seen that it has two rows. Because in fact, the actions will be executed as many times as there are rows. On this second part, we will see how to execute parameters in different ways. We will start with how to randomize the execution of the rows. For this, click on the element and select the Use Random Row box to execute the rows in an undefined order. Or you can also choose to execute a range of iterations. For this example, I have four iterations. And let's say I only want to execute from my second to my last iteration. Then I check the range of indexes box and enter 2 and 4 to execute from the second to the fourth iteration. It can also be done with bigger numbers like a file, a JSON or CSV file with hundreds and hundreds iteration. If you check the execute as suite box, it means that during the script execution, the subscript will be executed as a suite. Therefore, all its elements will be stocked in its proper folder. Now, we will see how to add an elements text in your call script action. That means that we want to complete a parameter with an element we've captured with the capture tool. So for that, we are going to call for a new subscript. In this subscript, all these, these elements are completed except for the first one named param0. So click on your subscript and click on the elements text button to add an element. 
For this example, this is a calculation, which is an addition with the number 6 and the result equal to 12. So we can capture the element we want to add in our script, which is going to be the number 6 to have the result equals to 12. When you click on the play button to execute the test, you can see the param 0 that shows the element we've captured and the calculation is being completed. Then if you check on the action, the button is indeed showing the param 0 with the value 6 that we've identified with the element. So that's it for this tutorial. Don't hesitate to leave a like and comment about future tutorials you want to see or a feedback about this one. Thank you for listening and I will see you next time. Bye bye!